In a previous video, we found the area under the graph of x squared, as x goes from 0 to 1, we found that area to be 1 third. We did that with Riemann sums. So that's this area in here. What do you think is the area, um, or, or what, uh, what do you think the integral from 0 to 1, so we'll talk about what this even means, of negative x squared dx is? So negative x squared I've drawn here, uh, it should be trapping this area. Well, let me even try and get that a little bit more symmetric. It should be trapping that area. And we know that these two uh, graphs are, are, you know, one is just a, a, a reflection of the other. So this should be the same area, right? This should be the same area, same amount of area. But if we do this, if we take this uh, integral, we get negative uh, x cubed over 3. That's our antiderivative, evaluated from 0 to 1. So this is going to be negative 1 third uh, minus, and this is cubed, minus uh, 0 cubed over 3. And this just simplifies to negative one third. And just to be clear, this is one cubed, not negative one cubed. It doesn't make a difference, but um, it would if this was squared, for instance, instead of cubed. Okay, so negative one third. So the integral is is giving us a negative number, and that's kind of an interesting fact because up to this point we talked about the integral as being area, but but area can't be negative. You can't have negative area. You can't take up a negative amount of space. So what this is telling us is that the area trapped uh, underneath the x-axis, so for instance, this would be another area that's trapped underneath the x-axis. Any area trapped underneath the x-axis is negative. It counts as negative. Um, so the integral, when it's summing up the area that a, a function is is um, is trapping, it could be the case that you're trapping some negative area and that's taking away from the sum. So let me let me maybe make that a little bit more clear. We'll do an example here. Let's say we wanted to find the area or the integral, I should say, as um, x goes from 0 to pi of cos x. Well, the, the derivative of sine is cos, so that means the antiderivative of cos is sine. Take a minute to pause and think about how that works out if you need to. So we have, this is our, our integral according to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we have the sine of pi minus the sine of 0. Well, the sine of pi is 0. The sine of 0 is 0. So of course, this is just equal to 0. And why is that happening? Well, let's, let's take a look. The, the graph of the cosine function looks something like this on the interval from 0 to pi. And so what we're finding what we're finding out is that it has just as much area above the axis as it does below. So this area here in pink is exactly er equal to the area here in blue. Uh, maybe I should use a different, maybe area in green. Let's contrast a little bit better. These two, um, the, the, they're, they're equal areas, and so the integral is taking this to be positive. Let me, sh the pink one, this is positive area, and this is negative area. So when you add them together, since they're equal, they, they just become zero. So that's something to be aware of, that if you want to find this strictly the area trapped between the function and the x-axis, if you want to find the actual amount of area, you're going to have to um, use absolute values. We'll talk more about this, but we'd have to take the absolute value of the cosine of x. And then that would force this to be positive, and then we, we would get the right amount of actual area. But it, it could be useful to know just what the total area above the x-axis is. So we'll, we'll talk all about that kind of thing uh, in the next 
few videos coming up. Um, okay, in the next video, probably, though, we'll talk about more properties of, of integrals besides this negative area property. Okay, see you in the next video.